Ryan Aber from NewsOK.com and the Oklahoman, joined by uh, the Tuscaloosa News' Taryn Walk. Taryn, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. And the Austin American Statesman's Suzanne Halliburton. Suzanne, how are you doing? I'm good. Glad to be with y'all. And we're here to preview the Orange Bowl coming up on December 29th uh, against uh, from Oklahoma and Alabama for in a college football playoff. And uh, Taryn, let's start with you. What's the mood around Alabama here entering this? Everybody expected the Crimson Tide to be here, and uh, now it's finally here. They're in the playoff, uh, two wins away from yet another national championship for Nick Saban and company. Uh, I think the mood is just kind of waiting and seeing how Tua's surgery and recovery has gone. Uh, We haven't really gotten an update on that since the Heisman, which was about a week ago at this point. Um, And... So we don't talk to Nick either until next week. So it'll be based on players and we don't get to it today. Later today, they finally start practice. So right now it's just a preparation period. I think a lot of Alabama fans are bitter. Kyler won the Heisman over to (laughs) us. So they want this matchup really bad to kind of maybe prove themselves. But that is in the past now, I'm sure, for the players themselves. And Suzanne, we talked about the Heisman Uh Trophy last week with Tua Tonga-Vailoa and Kyler Murray from Oklahoma. For you, from the Alabama perspective, how important is it that, that Tua plays versus Jalen Hurts, and how what's the difficulty level for Oklahoma preparing for, for both of those quarterbacks? Well, I guess that with Jalen, they're not as dynamic. Would they pass as much? I mean, I wouldn't think that Oklahoma would necessarily have to, like, pull their hair out over Jalen as opposed to Tua. And um, because Tua is a quarterback that they see every week, the kind of quarterback who likes to pass a lot, not the quality, but the kind every week, I guess Jalen maybe has more of a run run aspect to his game, but that's what I would think that they would, you know, the things that Ruffin McNeil has to talk about. Yeah, and, and uh, Taryn, I actually saw what you wrote today. I think it was today mm-hmm. about that, that dynamic of preparing for two quarterbacks. This is something that Oklahoma has done a lot this year. Uh, I, I think, uh, what was it, three of their first uh, four games, I think, where uh, they didn't, weren't sure who was going to play quarterback against them. That's a dynamic here. Uh, what does it feel like around Alabama with the difference between Tua and Jalen and how much that offense changes? We've seen them be really dynamic with Tua Tonga-Vailoa on the field, but in the SEC title game, they were better with Jalen Hurts on the field. Yeah, I think that's kind of a double threat in that way. I mean, as I wrote in the story, I got to talk to uh, Georgia's defensive back, DeAndre Baker, along with LSU's Greedy Williams, and they were both saying how difficult it is to prepare for two, especially when Tua and Jalen are so different. Um, Tua, as we've seen all season, is a big thrower, and he can make those miraculous throws on the run, scrambling, whether his knee hurts or not. But Jalen is also more aggressive in the fact that he can take it run as far as he wants, kind of like a running back almost, and pick up plays on his own. So they're different in that dynamic. And I don't think anyone's really concerned about when Jalen goes in or if Tua is going to be in. Because especially after the SEC championship, I think Jalen proved himself. And a lot of people actually love Jalen. Um, it's not like they're picking one over the other. I mean, they adore Tua, of course, of how this season has gone. But it's just what he toughened out through this season. And he has improved. You can see that a lot. And, like, you saw that in the SEC Championship and the snaps he's taken throughout the season that he's not the same quarterback he was last season. He has improved, even if he has been the backup. Yeah, and from the Oklahoma perspective, like I mentioned, they're, they're used to this. Suzanne touched on this, that uh, the, the styles are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And two is a little bit more what they're used to facing, Alabama's offense with Tua is a little bit more what uh, Oklahoma is used to facing. On the other side, though, it's it's uh, interesting that Oklahoma's offense isn't what Alabama is used to seeing, right. and uh, this is going to be a different kind of matchup for the Crimson Tide. What are they saying about facing uh, Kyler Murray and maybe outside of Kyler Murray? What's most concerning about Oklahoma's offense from the Alabama perspective? I don't know that they're – that concern. Start off with you, Taryn. Sorry. Oh, I don't know that they're that concerned just because the defense has improved throughout the season. They were the sore spot at the beginning where it was like, are they going to be able to 
play to the caliber they have in the past, and they proved they have. I mean, against Missouri, that was a huge throwing quarterback, and they shut him down, Drew Locke. And now I think they've also had four weeks that I think kind of everything of what happened in the past goes out the window because you got all this time to prepare that you can dissect it, and it's not a quick turnaround. I think that changes everything. There's the extra time. Can I interject something? Yeah, go ahead, Suzanne. I've covered um, both SEC and Big 12 games this year. Alabama has not seen a, an offense like Oklahoma. There's nobody in the SEC that can that is fast or as dynamic as what Oklahoma is going to throw at them. Mm-hmm. And they've got some teams in the SEC East that can throw, but this is just a whole nother dimension that Oklahoma has. And um, I'm wondering – if Alabama's best offense would be their running attack that would keep somebody like Kyler Murray and OU stable of wide receivers and running backs off the field. That's what I think we should wonder about. Yeah, I think that that's that's something interesting to to think about. And does Alabama want to slow things down a little bit uh, to, to grind it out against Oklahoma defense that has struggled all year? really except for that last game against Texas when they finally showed some level of competency there. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, they've been awful. Oh, Alabama should be able to move it. The question is, would they rather just grind it out on the ground and play a little bit slower game uh, than just try to score real quick, get Oklahoma's offense back in there? And we know what generally happens when Oklahoma's offense is on the field. So that'll be uh, something interesting to follow. Taryn, what do you think about that uh, possibility? I could see that. I mean, Alabama's defensive line is a very aggressive front. So um, the key for them will be getting to Kyler, I think. Um, you have Quentin Williams, who's a beast. He alone will be a force to be reckoned with. But then Isaiah Bugs is out there. Um, that I think slowing it down will be to their benefit. But the secondary has advanced. So... I think it comes so much back to the fact that there is so much time. Like, yeah, they might not have seen an offense like this all season, but they have four weeks of studying and getting ready. Like, they might not have practiced yet as of Friday morning, but they've had two weeks already to study film, and they're smart. Like, they can break things down. Like, it's incredible. Oh, I have no doubt that they're smart. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in my mind. But you can be really smart and not not anticipate how fast. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, and that's that, that to me, Suzanne, what you mentioned is why for Oklahoma to, to hang in this game and make it close and have a chance at the end, they need a hot start because it is imperative when you face a team as good as Alabama to really take advantage early because, like you mentioned, Suzanne, uh-huh. Alabama hasn't faced an offense like this. And as much as you prepare, this is a different beast when you get out there on the field against it. If Oklahoma is able to to score a couple quick touchdowns early and find a way to get a stop or two early, then all of a sudden their chances in this game go through the roof because Alabama, and we've seen this, we saw this last year with Georgia. Georgia settled in in the second half and was able to be relatively effective against that offense uh, after having some time to digest things. But early on, it was uh, too much for them to handle. Yeah. I mean, I know Texas what got ahead by 21 points. I think it was, and yeah. Oklahoma roared back. I mean, you can hold Kyler Murray all game, and then he'll break a 75-yard run on you. I mean, that's that's what is so amazing about his game. And I think the worst thing that Alabama can do, it's like playing a fast press offense in basketball that you get into like a, you know, just a stay running with them, so to speak. That would be the worst thing. But I think they do, OU would behoove them to get off to a quick start. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, Taryn, you brought up something that I thought was interesting. And to me, this is the matchup of the game. Uh, Quinnen Williams and that Alabama defensive line that's so good, able to be so aggressive against Oklahoma's offensive line. It's been one of the best in the country all year. Cody Ford and Bobby Evans, especially at the tackle spots. Drew Simi and Ben Powers at the guard spots. To me, however, that whoever wins that matchup is, is going to go a long way toward determining who wins this game. Yeah, they always say it starts in the trenches, starts and ends there. Yeah, it does. And I, I don't know that Al- that Oklahoma's defensive line is going to have much <laughs> success uh, for them. They haven't been able to to consistently get pressure on quarterbacks. Um, their, their linebackers have had some success, but a lot of that is because of 
some of the other issues that they've had defensively that everything sort of gets funneled to the linebackers. But uh, that, to me, is going to be the, the big deciding factor, Alabama's defensive line versus Oklahoma's offensive line. Mm-hmm. And plus, does, I guess, has Alabama needed to use a spy in any of the games that they've had to spy quarterbacks? Because I think Texas was kind of effective in doing that in the Big 12 championship until late that they devoted an outside linebacker to keeping Kyler Murray in check as far as the, his running game goes. And it was Kyler's passing late that, that beat the Longhorns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll, that'll be something interesting. Taryn, have, has Alabama had to use a spy against a, a quarterback who runs, uh, obviously not the way that Kyler does because not, not many people really do that, cool. but. I'm trying to think of who their most run-capable quarterback was. Was it Kellen Mond, even though Kellen didn't, didn't run a ton? I know huge. He, so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, compare Kyler and Kellen, because I've covered them both. Kyler's a lot smaller, but so much faster. Mm-hmm. And so, so much more intuitive about his running ability than Kellen Mond is. That'll definitely be something new that Alabama's defense is going to face is the fact that Kyler can, as you said, break out a 75 yard run, even if he takes a couple hits, it's like the timing of when it can happen. And those explosive plays can be contagious. And if Oklahoma's offense can build off of that and keep popping them out, then that's where it could be an issue. Yeah. So it's a a fascinating matchup. It's interesting. Alabama, I think favored by, is it uh, 14, 17? Yeah, the line yesterday was Alabama was a 14-point favorite. I think that switched to 13 and a half. It depends where you look, too. <laughs> so right the over-under is absurd. Uh, yeah. It's that's... like 81, isn't it? Yeah. That's the last time I saw. You know, I don't understand why that line hadn't come down a little bit. because, And I'm not a gambler at all. But it, that just seems extreme. Yeah, I was I was surprised it was 14. I thought maybe it would come out uh, right about 10 or so. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, the fact it's 14 is surprising. But it'll be a, an interesting uh, matchup to watch December 29th from the Orange Bowl in Miami Gardens, Florida. I'll be there. I think Taryn will be there. Uh, Suzanne, you going to be down there? Where are you going to be? I'm going to be at bowl the cot- Cotton Bowl covering Clemson and Notre Dame. Ah, well, you'll uh, maybe we'll see you. One of us uh, might uh, see you down the road. But uh, we're going to wrap it up for there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really quick, uh, Suzanne, how can people follow you on, on social media and check out your work? I'm, my Twitter handle is Suz Halliburton, and statesman.com is where you can find us. All right. Taryn? Uh, at Taryn Victoria, T-E-R-R-I-N-V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A, and then tidesports.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at R-Y-A-B-E-R, Rye Aber and at newsok.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with uh, further Oklahoma, Alabama, Orange Bowl coverage throughout the month of December. Thank you.